Before going to the coding part, let's understood the client server interaction diagram of UDP socket. As we have seen in the basic of networking that UDP is connection less protocol, right? That is, the client does not form a connection with the server like in TCP and instead just it sends a datagram and the server need not accept a connection and it just waits for datagram to arrive. And datagram contains the address of sender which the server used to send the data to the correct client. We also know that UTP does not check for error in the exchange diagram. Right. So that's why it gives that is why it gives very fast communication. Now, as you see in the interaction diagram, it is very similar to TCP, but there are various major changes. In UDP, after creating a socket object, in UDP, after creating a socket object, the server process bind that socket to a particular IP address and port number. After successful winding, the server process will start waiting until datagram packet arrive from client. In TCP, we have seen the concept of listen and accept, which makes a TCP connection oriented protocol. But in UDP, there is no such thing. That's why it is a connection-less protocol. Now, after binding, the client server enters into the request response in finite loop. When the client process finishes, it exits from the it exits by closing down the connection. And at that moment, the server process probably goes back to the waiting state. I am again repeating here that the this interaction diagram is a very simplified representation of the actual reality. In practice, any production server process has multiple threads or sub processes to handle concurrent connection from thousands of client over respective virtual channels. Now, let's jump to the coding part. I am using PyCharm ID for coding. Let's create UDP server first. As we all now know that first we have to import the socket module. Now let's create socket object. So socket sock is equal to socket dot socket. Here we have to pass an argument uh, two argument in this. The first argument we all know is socket dot af underscore init, which belongs to IPv4 family. And the second argument we have to pass here is socket dot sock underscore dgram. The sock underscore dgram here means that the connection less UDP protocol. As we have seen in the interaction diagram, we now have to bind the socket with IP address and port number. So there is a method called bind as we have seen already. Here in bind, we have to pass two argument, uh, one tuple and the tuple consisting of IP address and port number. Here again, as an, in previous lecture, I am providing localhost and port number. So localhost is nothing but 127.0.0.1 and port number let's suppose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Now let's write infinite loop for sending and receiving data. So while true, for sending the data, usually uh, to send the data using UDP protocol, 
we use RDCV from method of socket module. So RDCV from returns two things that is data as well as address that is very important point here. So let's write first so data comma address is equal to SOCK dot RDCV from now. In TCP, uh, here, why we are not using RECV method, which we have used in TCP? Because in TCP, once the connection gets established, the address information does not change, right? But in other, other, on the other hand, in UDP, UDP is a connectionless protocol. So here, we have to also receive the address so that we want to send the data back. So that's why in RECV from there are two things, data as well as address. But in RECV method, we only have data part because the con connection is established. Here the connection is not established. If we want to send back the data to the correct client, we want address as well. Right. And in RDCV from, we have to pass an integer. And this integer represents the number of bytes you want to accept. So here we are trying to provide enough byte to cover the entire message. Because we have seen in the background of networking that um, the packet of uh, UDP message should be equal to uh, the message, the message size of the UDP should be equal to the packet size, right? So here we are trying to provide enough uh, bytes. So let's, uh, I am providing here, let's say 4096 bytes. Now, let's say we have to also send the data to the client. So let's define message is hello. I am UDP server. Here, the also one important point is here. We use send to method here for the UDP. The logic is same. Why we are using another method? Because we have to send the data to a particular address. And in UDP, there is no connection established. That's why we have to specifically provide the address. So that's why there is another method send to. So let's write sock dot send to. It's take two argument. One is message. And another one is address. And also let's print the data that we have received from the client from, that is received from Let's print the data, print data. Okay. Now. And also the masses should be in bytes. Here it is in a string, but we have to send the message should be in byte. So let's convert into bytes. So bytes of hello. Okay. And also we have to encode this message, right? So dot encode in UTF-8 string. Okay. Now. Now let's write a simple client program which is able to interact with this server program. All things are similar, somewhat similar. So I am copying from the server program up to this part right now i want to send a message to the server so let's define a message hello udp server again we know to send message here we have to provide we have to use send to method so client underscore socket dot send to and we have to encode the message as we all know into UTF-8 and uh, uh, we have to uh, forward this we have to send the message into the local host 
the address so I am providing 127.0.0.1 and the port number is 12345 right and also if the server send so we have to receive that so data comma address is equal to client underscore socket dot receive from and also here I'm providing 4096 and let's say print uh, server says and again print the data so print str data and after that we have to close the connection now let's run the code so first we will run the code of the server and now let's run the code of the client as you see here it says hello I am a UDP server and now if we go to the server output we will see it prints hello UDP server so in this lecture we have seen the message successfully receive and send between the server and the client and we also able to get uh, knowledge about how UDP socket works